one of the ways we can follow a rate of reaction is by testing how much it weighs. ways that you can measure the rate of reaction. Here we're looking at an experiment where I'm adding in marble chips into hydrochloric acid and if you notice the weight on the scales is going down. So it started at zero, when I added in the marble chips it went up to about four and then decreases very very quickly. Now the examiners like asking this sort of question um, because it's not necessarily one that's very commonly done in class because two decimal place balances are very expensive and there aren't necessarily lots of them lying around. So here's a video and in this video I'm going to show you the experiment and I'm going to show you what the graph's going to be like. So what we added in was calcium carbonate. In the flask already was hydrochloric acid. And that is going to make three things. It's going to make our salt, our water, and our carbon dioxide. Now to make our salt, we need to take the metal from the carbonate, which is calcium. And because I've added a hydrochloric acid, it's going to make a chloride salt. So it's going to make calcium chloride. This comes up quite a lot in exams, and I've got loads and loads of videos going over how to do these equations properly. Once you get the hang of them, they are super easy and worth lots of lovely marks. Then we're going to get water produced and carbon dioxide. Now, the way that I'm following this reaction here is by looking at the loss of mass. But you'll notice that we have an acid on one side and we have a water on the other side. So if I put indicator on here, we should also see a change in colour. As the reaction progressed, it would get less acidic. Now the reason that you can see all the bubbling going on there is because of this carbon dioxide. When the reaction is progressing, the carbon dioxide is being produced and that's what's coming out in the bubbles. Now that's also the reason the mass is going down. This is sometimes a bit complicated to get your head around because it looks like things are, it looks like the, the mass is getting less but you know from the law of conservation of mass that we can't just lose things. It's just that the carbon dioxide is just escaping out the top here. Sometimes you might see this done with like a um, cotton wool bung in the top, but that's that's really just to stop things falling in. It won't stop the carbon dioxide being released. So the carbon dioxide just makes its way out of the top. And now if you were to draw a graph of this experiment, we would have time along the bottom in seconds, and then mass upside in grams and this will go down initially very very quickly and then after a while it would start to level off but when it starts to level off that's because all of the the reactants been used up and there's nothing left to to react there's no calcium carbonate left there's no hydrochloric acid left so the reaction will just come to a stop now, if they were to ask you about this in the exam, they could ask you what you might observe, what you might see. So you could see bubbles or if indicators have been put in there, then you might see a colour change. They might ask you about um, the resolution of the balance. That's how accurate the balance is. So we want it to go to um, two decimal places would be a good resolution for this balance. If you just had it to one decimal place um, or no decimal places, if you just had it to whole numbers, then you wouldn't see a lot of change going on. You wouldn't really see the reaction taking place. Your graph would look a lot more jerky. The other thing they could do is, this is getting quite complicated, ask you for a reaction at a certain point where they might ask you to draw a tangent to the line and then expect you to work out um, the, the rate of reaction at that particular place. But that's getting really, really quite complicated now. So this is just one way that you can measure the rate of reaction of something, measure the rate of reaction by loss of mass. You could also do this experiment exactly the same way if you were to put 
um, a delivery tube on the top and then collect the amount of gas that was released in say a measuring cylinder or a gas syringe. This is just one of the many ways you can do this experiment. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want to say thank you or if you want access to my online classroom priority video requests or to all the books I'm publishing, you can pop over to Connors or keep up to date with everything on my website. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And if you follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook, you'll get all the updates there. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you found this helpful. Anything else you need, any other help you need, just let me know below.